Hi, my name is Peter Akerley. I'm the president and CEO of Erdean Resource Development. I'll be speaking to you today about the development of a new high-grade gold district, the Hundi Gold Project, located in southwestern Mongolia. Our standard forward-looking statements. We consider our investment proposition to have three key pillars, people, growth, and value. On the people side, we're an experienced and passionate group of explorers, developers, and financiers who are dedicated to bringing significant returns to our investors and shared benefits to our stakeholders. On the growth side, we're first movers in a new gold district with a team having demonstrated discovery ability in an area with exceptional exploration potential. And on the value side, we have a near surface 100% owned gold deposit, unique in its high grade, perhaps in the top decile of developing gold projects globally, advancing to production for a start in early 2022 with 60,000 ounces per year projected. We're located in an unexplored portion of one of the world's great giant gold and copper belts, the Central Asian Orogenic Belt, host to some of the world's largest gold deposits, Morintao, Kumtor, and now the Oyutogoi deposit in southeastern Mongolia. Our projects are located in the southwestern part of Mongolia near the Seke border crossing, an area that we have come to know very well. We've been exploring here for well over a decade. We've been first movers and leaders in regional exploration, leading us to the discovery of the Hundi Gold District. So let me get into a little bit more detail on the startup project, the Bayan Hundi deposit. Here you can see a map of our license holdings. Those outlined in black are our mining licenses and those in white exploration licenses. Each of our three mining licenses hosts deposits with a multitude of early stage exploration opportunities surrounding them. Our focus in terms of development is in the Bayan Hyundai Gold Deposit, you'll see in the southern part of our license holdings. Bayan Hyundai hosts approximately 409,000 ounces of gold at an average grade of 3.7 grams per ton in reserve. Significant potential exists around that deposit in resources, which I'll come back to uh, in a moment. We have a uh, simple development and processing flow sheet. This is a, um, a pretty straightforward CIP plant at about 1,800 tons per day or 600,000 tons per annum, which will be sourced in terms of uh, plant and equipment out of China and delivered on site for construction in 2021. The feasibility study was delivered uh, in, in the middle of this year. And here you can see the results of that with very strong returns, uh, utilizing a modest capital. Uh, we have an initial capital expenditure of approximately 59 million, but an after tax MPV of 100 million US based on a $1,400 gold price, which I'll come back to in a moment. At that base case, we have an IRR of 42%, all in sustaining costs of 733, which again puts us in the lower decile of, um, of developing gold projects. The head grade I mentioned at 3.7 grams per ton with a very good recovery of 93% and an average annual gold production of 63,000 ounces per year. This is that production uh, profile. And uh, what you can see here is we are bringing grades forward to maximize returns. So based off of that 3.7 grams per ton, you can see in the early years that we're closer to 4.3 grams per ton as we've pulled some of that grade forward, allowing us to uh, peak in year two at 77,000 ounces per year. I'll come back to again on the expiration side, some of the upside we see both in uh, bringing years three and five, up to a higher production level, but also extending the mine life um, on this opportunity. This is the projected annual free cash flow from the feasibility. In brown is $1,400 base case. And you can see here the increase to an average of $51 million a year in annual after tax free cash flow at $1,800 gold. So quite a significant cash flow um, at that gold price. The impact on uh, net present value and IRR is quite significant. As you can see here, our $100 million base case jumps to well in excess of $200 million at gold prices exceeding $1,800. 
And you can see similarly on the IRR, the 42% base case jumping up to an excess of 75% at current gold prices. The current schedule sees us moving through the remaining de-risking elements of uh, permitting, additional construction readiness, getting into the early construction camp establishment as we move into early Q1, get into the full construction mode in uh, Q1 and Q2 of next year to have the plant construct in toward, constructed towards the end of 2021 and commissioning in early 2022 for first gold as we move into Q2 of that year. Now let me switch over to the growth side and it's truly an exciting uh, area of, of the globe really after 30 years as a geologist to see the opportunities that we have uncovered with a minimal amount of expenditures to date is very exciting and a testament to what we think this area will bring. Uh, this slide shows you the three areas that we're most focused on with our current exploration program, which is an 18,000 meter drill program that is focused on expanding our current resource inventory, which you can see in the chart, 1.1 million ounces at close to two and a half grams per ton, looking at increasing that up to towards 2 million tons if we can hit our targets. And again, the focus is on Bayan Hyundai, uh, effectively looking at the low hanging fruit around the current deposit. Dark Horse, which is an earlier stage project, three and a half kilometers north of Bayan Hyundai. And then the Alta Nar project, which is 16 kilometers north and has an existing resource, which is part of what we've uh, shared with you here in the table uh, on this slide. So beginning with Bayan Hyundai, as we've discussed, there's 409,000 ounces in reserve in the pit you can see on this slide. Surrounding that, in some of the areas uh, within the pit confines, but closer to surface, which were considered waste, we have a number of opportunities for expansion. And that's somewhat reflected in the pit constrained resource numbers you see on the left-hand side of this slide. We have over 600,000 ounces of resource at better than three grams per ton. So much of what is in the pit um, or much of what is in the resource does not uh, get included in the pit. So there's upwards of 200,000 ounces at over three grams per ton that currently surrounds that pit. And a number of those areas have room for additional expansion beyond that, which is the focus of our current drilling. That drilling is focused uh, predominantly in Stryker West, where we have significant opportunity for greater volume. Uh, Midfield Southeast and Stryker Southwest are areas where we have an opportunity to bring forward some extremely high grades that can help us increase the overall uh, grade in those years I pointed out earlier, years three through five. So that work is underway and we do expect to upgrade our resource estimate on by in Hyundai in the early part of 2021. Moving north to the Dark, Dark Horse Prospect, uh, three and a half kilometers north, we have a very similar geologic and structural setting to what we see at Bayan Hyundai. Uh, very similar alteration and gold mineralization and quartz agillaria veins. We've really just begun our work here with some early stage drilling and trenching. You can see some of those results on this page where We've had up to an ounce of gold in one meter intersections and some shallow drilling. We've had some good trench results, six meters of 8.8 .8 grams. And as you can see here, we're testing the uh, near surface expression of magnetic low features, which are associated with the mineralization or the uh, hydrothermal alteration at Bayan Hyundai as well. So we feel we're onto something quite significant here. It's a very large target. Uh, seeing similar expressions of mineralization and alteration over a three kilometer by two kilometer area. Uh, so the drills are turning here as we speak. Uh, we should have further results for this as we move through uh, into December and into the early part of 2021. And then moving uh, 16 kilometers north to the Alton Nar system. This is a uh, an advanced project. Uh, we have established half a million ounces here at close to two grams per ton. It is a bit of a different animal in that it is a polymetallic uh, gold, silver, lead, zinc deposit, as you can see here with the associated numbers in the resource categories we've established. But it remains early stages. It's advanced in the sense that we have an initial resource, but there's 18 targets here along a five and a half kilometer trend. And only a small portion of those have been drilled off to date and only in the top 150 meters from surface. So 
tremendous upside here for growth, which we will be moving towards once we've completed the drilling in the Hundi license area. Now, let me speak to you about our, uh, our targeting here. We are looking at trying to establish up to 2 million ounces of resource. And what we hope to do through that is to be able to see the current uh, 63,000 ounces per year move closer to an 80,000 ounce per year production profile for that initial five year op operation. During that period, we would be looking to develop new resources at Alton Nar as well as Dark Horse and Alton Arrow that would allow us to do a significant expansion to bring us up into that 120,000 to 140,000 ounce range as we move into years three and five. So when you look at the colors along the, uh, the columns in this chart, the brown, are, brown, brown columns are our existing reserves. The blue are those high grade areas in the midfield and striker west areas where we've had you know, 100 to 500 gram intersections within tens of meters of surface that we hope to be able to bring in and bring that grade forward to push up that production profile closer to the 80,000 ounces. The work we're doing around the Bayan Hyundai area, we expect will extend the mine life of the uh, planned Bayan Hyundai plant. And that's the white columns towards the back end of this chart. And then the gray is that second opportunity beginning to build the resource out even further uh, through the development of the Alton Nar and um, adjacent prospects. So let me move to the people side of our business. We're working in a very, um, uh, exciting country. Mongolia had not really witnessed much investment in terms of the mining industry up until the uh, early 2000s and now has a number of significant projects underway. But this country is a very uh, low population. It's uh, only 3 million people in the world's 18th largest country. It's had very strong GDP growth over the last several years. It now has 30 year history of democratic elections and has a well-educated young population with a 98% literacy rate. On the mining side, mining represents approximately 50% of foreign direct investment in the country, 21% of GDP and 85% of exports. And 70% of the country's land continues to be unexplored. Over the last several years, we've seen a significant increase in the uh, number of mining professionals employed throughout the country with an estimate now of over 40,000 people employed in the mining industry of Mongolia. It has a competitive regulatory regime, 5% gold royalty rate, 25% corporate income tax. There's a double taxation treaty with Canada and 20 other nations. There's a stabilization certificate that provides certainty of current tax rates for up to seven years. And Canada and Mongolia have a foreign investment promotion and protection agreement that was put in place just a few years ago. Mongolia has seen a significant increase in the amount of hard rock gold mining over the last uh, few years. In the top right of this image, you see Step Gold, which went into production over the last uh, several months. TSX listed company. Uh, in the center of the page, Boru has been brought back into production by OZD. Uh, I think they're targeting now 60,000 ounces as well. And the Bionarig mine in the top left is uh, controlled by Kerry Holdings out of Hong Kong and also is in that 60 to 70,000 ounce per year heap leach uh, range. On the uh, second from bottom right is the Oyutoboy deposit, one of the biggest copper gold developments uh, in the world today. Next year, they're expected to produce about half a million ounces of gold. And on the far left, uh, Sagan Sahir is a uh, up and coming hard rock gold project as well, controlled by private European uh, UK interests. And then our projects, as I've shared with you in the southwestern part of the country. A couple of uh, comments about our, our people and our partners. We've been in the country since 1997. We build a very strong network of uh, associates, employees, and friends in this country. We have uh, secured the interest of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which is Mongolia's for largest foreign investor with uh, about $2 billion invested in the country. Um, largely in the mining industry. And two years ago, we became the first cross-listed company on the Mongolian Stock Exchange, now with over 6,000 Mongolian shareholders. We have 15 years investing in the same province that we're currently working in, investing in community development and environmental stewardship. Our board, I would suggest, is second to none when it comes to Mongolian experience. Uh, many of these people are pioneers in Mongolia's modern mining era 
and the remainder of our board members have significant experience in the mining and finance uh, sectors. Today, we have a share price of approximately 35 cents uh, US. We have a market cap of uh, approximately 95 million US. And I'll put that into the context of where we think the cash flow is from that initial project. At $1,800 gold price, we'll be producing over $50 million in after tax free net cash flow relative to a market cap of 95 million. So, significant upside on a re rating for our company as we move through this final stage of de risking. We have 268 million shares outstanding and approximately $14.5 million in cash. Our shareholder base is shown on the right hand side. We have uh, a retail component of approximately 30%, Eric Sprott at 12%, our Mongolian shareholders at five. Our management and directors have been consistently 8% holders of the company, tech resources at 4%, and the European Bank as mentioned at 11%. There is close to another 30% held by institutions and family offices here in Canada and throughout Asia. So let me begin to wrap things up here. Reasons to invest in Erdine. We have an exceptionally high grade open pit gold deposit projected to be shovel ready in late 2020 with construction in 2021. We have low capital cost project with robust economics targeting greater than 60,000 ounces per year commencing in early 2022. We have first mover advantage in a very exciting region with district scale potential. We have a proven exploration team who's discovered three deposits and multiple high grade prospects over the last decade. We have an experienced corporate development and government relations team. We have a strong shareholder base and we have a robust social license to operate. Now for the catalysts. Buy and Hyundai drilling is underway. We expect to expand resources and reserves as we move through Q4 into Q1 of 2021. We have exploration drilling underway on an exciting new target at Dark Horse, after which we'll move to the Alton Nar expansion drilling later this year. We have a resource update coming in the first half of 2021. We have pre-construction and construction readiness work underway. The project debt financing that I alluded to earlier, we now have a mandate letter signed with Export Development Canada and due diligence now commenced. Full construction underway for much of 2021 and first gold within 18 months of commencing construction. When you look at an opportunity to invest in a mining business, you often look at this mining project valuation life cycle chart. And this typically is how you see the valuations run. The expiration risk, uh, you see a significant run up in value when you have that first discovery. As that technical risk sets in, you'll see a decrease in value. What you've seen with our company over the last 18 months is that de-risking process accelerated. We delivered the pre-feasibility, we delivered the bankable feasibility. We've been through the funding risk side of it with Eric Sprott putting in equity with the European bank funding us and now with the mandate letter from Export Development Canada. Much of that risk is lessening. We'll continue to focus on that as we move through the remainder of this year into 2021 and then into full production in 2022. But this is being done in a new environment for exploration, a new district, one of the most exciting areas I've worked in in my career. So I believe not only do we have the potential for a significant re-rating on the backs of a new gold development, we're in one of the most exciting new discovery areas on the globe. So thank you very much. I'm certainly available to answer your questions during this event, or if you'd like to follow up um, at our website and contact us, you can reach us at www.erdean.com. Thank you very much.